Alright, so I don't know how I'd let a whole month go by without me even hearing about this keyboard, but it's finally time to show you guys the FL Key Mini MIDI keyboard. Today I'm going to be talking about why I picked the mini version of this keyboard as opposed to its full-size counterpart. And I want to make this perfectly clear, the goal of this video is not to show every little feature that it has. But before you click off, I think I do have something that is much more valuable. I'm going to show you guys my favorite ways to use this keyboard and how you can expect it to influence your workflow. Real world everyday applications that only this controller can provide, no matter your skill level. Now truth be told, I'm actually not a piano player. So in order to show off this keyboard, I'm going to need some help from a friend. Sinking. I can't. <laughs> 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 I just lick my mic. Right I didn't mean to actually touch it. This is Jess. She's gonna play piano. Jess, play the piano. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Too much reverb. Very much reverb. You can't do it normal because you don't have barely well, yeah. two octaves. I know. I was it's gonna be very everywhere. difficult for me to work with. I'm used to the luxury of my full keyboard. I think that I had to record it in two two separate recordings because I do my right hand and then my left hand separate and octave lower. Computer, turn on studio lights. So Jessica is very, she's very capable of making her own chords, but that is going to be one thing you guys will have to notice with this keyboard is that because it's so small, it's very difficult to do two hand playing like what for chords in a lower octave and then maybe a top line, even two octaves up. So that's going to be something you guys have to keep in mind if you're getting the smaller version of this keyboard. This microphone is very good at picking up what it's pointing at. So I'm not even sure if anyone can hear me. Is this like... It's on, yes, Let don't do sound. that. Yes, it would make a sound. You're tapping on the ah. mic. It's just so little, it's got small hands, but. I'm sweating, it's so hot here. It is very hot here, yeah. I think we should be done. All right, I think we're done. Jess is a very talented piano player who has released some of her own music on Spotify. If you want to go give that a listen, there'll be a link down below. So some important takeaways from Jess's showcase. One, because there are less keys to work with, some people could find it a little awkward to play. You know, if your left hand's playing the chords and your right hand is two octaves up playing a melody, you might find this keyboard a little bit limited in that sense. Not only are there less keys to work with, but I believe that the keys are actually smaller in size themselves, as Jess was having some problems hitting some notes here and there. And she did even say that they felt kind of small. So accuracy may be a problem for those of you that are used to a full-size keyboard or piano. Yeah, no. Some might actually like it better small. It's just a matter, matter of preference. <laughs> just want to say if you guys are enjoying the video, drop a like for me down below and subscribe for more future content, as well as check the description for some free stuff. But now it's my turn to show you guys what I can do with this keyboard as a more experienced producer. <laughs> All right, so I think that I got everything all set up properly. I now have the B cam reserved for the, the piano cam right now, just so you guys can see how bad I am at playing the keys. And if I look a little more overexposed, because I have another ring light over here, which you can probably see, you can. I don't want that on screen. There you go, much better. So with so many new features that I'm not used to, I'm implementing things slowly, all right? So my workflow can only get faster from here, because the first couple of days of using this keyboard, I wanted to do everything on here. Like I wanted basically just to be like an NPC, and it really slowed down my workflow, which of course is gonna be a learning curve, and it's gonna take time get used to everything but i don't think that doing everything all at once like i normally do is going to be the right answer here start your process how you normally would and then just start implementing the new features as you go getting more and more comfortable with each feature as you go along and as you can see right now i can play notes outside of the scale this is a fully functioning keyboard right now clicking all the keys will have an accurate note i'm sending this focus manually so hopefully i can get this just right so i'm not gonna be showing you guys every single feature in here because it's just showing you guys my process of how i make beats now with this new keyboard but hitting this scale button right here now you can see that turned on every note that i play will be in the same scale it is very velocity sensitive like very much so There we go. So obviously, as you can see from my uh, my finger playing right here, I'm not playing how I normally would with chords, okay? So it'd be like this normally. It would be normal placement. This is proper placement for playing piano. 
because I'm not classically trained or even know how to play piano that much, I'm just doing the normal chicken pecking version of it, okay? That's just how I play the piano, deal with it. And honestly, there are two features in here that I feel really, really change the way that I make beats and the scale feature is one of them and we'll talk about the second one here in a bit. But these are definitely some chords that I normally would not even use, which is why I feel like I'm making very different sort of beats right now because these aren't chords that I would normally use, not the feelings that I would normally use, and it just leads to different results. So one thing that I've noticed from playing the piano too is that if you want more lush sounding chords, a lot more pleasing sounding, the higher notes are generally the lower velocities and the lower notes are generally the higher velocities, more like just played on a higher tone. Like this chord right here is very lush. Right, that's very full sounding, it's a lot more low end, and the high end is acting as more like accents, right? If you saw the last video, I want to make a certain type of beat here today. So I'm just going to be changing the scale here. So now we're going to be in the key of F right there. Just hold scale, and then put F. And I want to make sure that we're going to be in the minor scale, so also holding the scale button, and then hitting minor right there, which is the C chord. And now because I have this keyboard, I would like to focus more on the melodies first, and the drums are going to be very simple. Let's try and get a different sort of instrument over here. Let's try going back inside of Arcade. And honestly, what I'll do over here is hit Control B, a couple of times and then make a new pattern and then stretch it out the full duration and then just loop that and then just start basically just messing around on the keyboard and then just record literally everything and then once you find something that you like like maybe it's even by accident i don't know you're just going with the flow you have it all recorded and you can put it inside of your beat once you find that melody that you like I think it's super important to mention that just because you get this keyboard does not mean that you're going to be 100% perfect at it straight away. It's like getting any other instrument for the first time. If you're not used to playing piano, getting this keyboard won't make you Beethoven. I'm sorry to say, but that's not, it won't do it. It just has a lot of great features and integration within FL Studio. So be patient and work your way up to the more advanced stuff and don't completely alter your workflow that you're already used to. All right, now I'm gonna be hitting the record button and honestly just kind of see what happens. <laughs> Nope. Something's getting close though. I'm getting a rhythm here. I actually want a different instrument for right now. I'm not feeling this one yet. That was actually not terrible. I think I just kind of messed up the last note over here. I actually do kind of like that. And then honestly, you can start copying it over again, or you can just try and find something even more. And I think I want to find a different part for this melody right here. I think I finally got this. Much better, okay, much better. Okay, I like that. So much better, so much better. Okay, cool, I'm actually starting to like this now. So if you want to make it sound like more of like a dark sort of tone, the resample here actually makes it sound way more warm. I really do like brass in these sort of beats, they're so good. Yeah, that fits it pretty damn well, actually. Honestly, arpeggios are kind of difficult for me. I can't lie to you guys. I think it's important here to realize that this is, if it's gonna slow down your process, uh, maybe it's too advanced for you right now, and then just do it the way that you know that you can do it. Practice it and then come back to it once you're actually more experienced with it. So if you can't tell already, we're gonna be making like a synth wave, vapor wave sort of, sort of beat today. All right, something did not feel right with this beat, so I actually went off camera to change and tweak a few things here and there. One thing I did was going from 140 BPM down to 80 BPM and really speed up the melody, and then change some sounds here and there. And then after all of that, I actually added the serum patch right here for my bass line. And don't worry, you guys didn't miss any keys playing i actually could not I, I would not be able to make this pattern with by playing keys i just clicked all these notes in and it's very simple and then if you look over here did some slight leveling nothing crazy i want to save most of that for the mixing but finally it sounds like this And 
that sounds way more pleasing to me. Like, honestly, I was getting really frustrated with the beat, so I had to go off camera, but I really like all the things that I did here and the bass line that I added really simple, really nice. And now finally, I am happy with this melody, so we can get on to the next portion, which is going to be the drum programming. I am a huge fan of old school hip hop beat making. People like Jay Dilla, Kanye, Logic even, all using drum machines and hitting pads to make new creative patterns. Adding a human quality which can be hard to replicate with computers. So obviously the integration with FL Studio's channel rack was a big selling point for me personally. And if you're a beginner, like I did with the melodies, just record what you have in your head. That's the most important thing, don't worry too much about accuracy just yet, because you can fix all the timing with Alt-Q and by dragging the notes with the mouse. So long as you get your ideas out, that's the most important thing. And this is probably my most fun that I have with this new keyboard. So as you can see over here, by hitting shift and then the channel rack all the way in the far left corner, all these lights right here are going to be the different ones on my channel rack. So if I hit arcade over here, the very second one. And for all of these actually, each pad will only hit on C5. Which is fine because the whole point of the channel rack is to be able to play different instruments at once, like this. which makes your channel rack basically into an NPC, which is so, so nice. Because in my journey to become a better musician and actually learn how to play certain instruments, the, the easiest way to do that in some FL Studio would just be to use MPC, which does not have all the sounds you would make for like a trap beat or something like that. So the fact that you can play every single one shot as its own instrument at the same time is really just a game changer. And that's the second reason why I use this. And granted, I'm still practicing, so they're probably gonna be very simple patterns, and I'm not gonna be doing some crazy rolls or anything like that, but we're just gonna go with the flow and see how this works. But I don't wanna be triggering these instruments over here, and I want just the drums on my pattern. So I'm gonna be highlighting all of these, which I definitely recommend you guys do. Go to the top left over here and then hit group selected, and then just name it something drums. And finally, I would recommend arranging these in the way that you want to be displayed on your keyboard because over here, the first one is my kick and right next to it is my snare. Normally, you want to be able to have those on two different hands, so you can even put that down over to the very bottom over here and now it's going to be the very last one. Now, finally, let's go in here and start recording our drum pattern. Honestly, I think that's gonna be the pattern, man. I think that's just gonna be it. And that's how I use the FL Key Channel Rack feature to make my drums. So we've gone over how the scale mode helps out with making melodies and how the channel rack helps out with recording drums. But now finally the third phase of what makes the thing so powerful is the integration that it has with the mixer in FL Studio. Now this won't completely change the way that you mix, but it will add a very refreshing analog feel to your current process. And it could not be easier to set up. Like usual, going over here and then putting this onto a mixer track. And if you can't afford it, I recommend putting the drums on 10 and on. I'll explain why here in just a second. So once again, in the far left corner, hitting shift, and then these green pads right here have different functions than the orange ones. Mine is pretty much always going to be on this one right here, mixer volume. Now when I move all these knobs, it's going to control the mixer volume, and then it's just my normal mixing process like usual. <laughs> That's all that I've got for the melodies. I've got five things on there. So the first knob controls the arcade over here. The second knob controls the lead. Third one is the horns, then the arp, then the bass. And the reason why I said to put drums on mixture channels 10 and on is for when you hit shift, mixer track right, which is the same button as note repeat. And it's really cool how they highlight it. You now have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 highlighted. Because now I wanna go over here and put all of these onto a mixer bus, cause I, cause I want to. So number nine is going to be my drum bus right here. The second knob is going to be mixer channel 10, which is my kick. You can see it moving right there. And now just continue your mixing for the drums. <laughs> It's 
really awesome just to feel what you're doing inside of your DAW. By turning these knobs and actually seeing it happening in real time, it's really, it's, it's, it's different. It's really, really neat. And it's more than just cool to see. So when you're adding EQ or distortion to something, it could really raise the volumes or lower the volumes. I am going to save this really quickly because this next plugin could definitely crash. So while I'm tweaking things inside of the plugin right here, at the same time, I could be using the knobs to really change the volume of the mix as well. And that is obviously not going to be where my mixing ends. In fact, I'm gonna do a lot more off camera here, but that is all the integration that I personally use in my new, new, yeah, new, in my new workflow when it comes to having this new FL Key Mini. This thing has single-handedly instantly changed the way that I make beats, especially because, you know, I'm not an experienced piano player and a lot of my production is done by clicking stuff in, but I can, that's definitely going to be changing now. Now that I've got such an easy way to be able to practice all these things with the scale mode and the channel rack feature on the FL Key Mini, it's going to make it so much easier to record stuff in. Am I going to be perfect at it? No. And it's gonna, probably going to be a very long time until I'm even good at it, but it's finally a way that makes it easy to practice. And that's, huge. So I should have mentioned it in the uh, narration here, but I'm not going through all the features here today. I didn't even go over the, the sequencer, which is another thing that people are really excited about, but I'm honestly not going to be using that all that much personally. So if you just want to know 100% about just the features, then go check out one of those other more detailed videos on everything about the keyboard. This is just my own personal way of how I use it and how I think a lot of people can use it easily. All right, but I am going to be finishing mixing this beat right now. So I'll show you guys that at the very end. All right, so normally now I'd go over the final thoughts of the product, but I pretty much did that in the last clip. Plus, I have been talking way too much in this video, so thank you guys so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.